Well, hi again, this is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and today I'm here with John Welch, who is our company Vice President of Development, and also Mac, who's chilling on the couch again uh, as our company uh, Future President and Mascot. Uh, today we're talking, here to talk about the upsert pattern. Now, John, what does the upsert pattern mean? So, uh, when we talk about upsert, what we usually mean is I've got a set of data coming in, and I need to determine is this data that I want to insert into a table, or do I want to update an existing row? Okay, so that up and updating and then uh, cert for insert. Yes. So it, is this going to be Excel to SQL Server, or Excel to Oracle, or could be SQL Server to SQL Server, or whatever? Any source of data to, to any particular target. Okay, well today we're going to talk about mostly the SIS pattern for this, but of course there's T-SQL patterns as well. Uh, so let's go to the whiteboard and kind of talk to kind of diagram some of the options that users have around doing that. Then. Okay, sounds good. So, John, what I've drawn up here is a classic example that uh, our sales department always gives us. I've got this Excel spreadsheet, and I want to look in our current customer database. If the, if the, if the record is there, if the customer is there, then I'll update the customer, or maybe the duplicate, I'll ignore it. Uh, but the customer is not there, I want to insert. This is a classic upsert pattern, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, what my sales manager's done for me is he's been very, very nice and he's bolded all the new records in Excel, and he highlighted the yellow in any kind of updates. So that will help us a lot in SSIS 1. Uh, unfortunately, not really. <laughs> ah, okay. So what are we going to do here? What, what, what are a few of the patterns that we can use? So uh, let's, let's start with the simplest pattern. And this is probably okay, given that you have an Excel spreadsheet that probably doesn't have a ton of data in it. But if okay. you move up to something that has more data, you probably want to change this pattern. So we'll, we'll, we'll start good, with the simple. Better and best kind of approach? <laughs> exactly. Okay. So in the simple case, uh, what we want to do is start with an Excel source, uh, or you can use an OLEDB source. And this is an SSIS data flow in this case. The SSIS data flow. Uh, and we're going to connect this to a lookup. And in our lookup, we're going to configure it to look up against our existing customer table in the database. OK, so we would have a database over here with all of our customers. It would bounce up against that and say, is this customer there? Is this customer not exactly. there? Exactly. It's going to look based on whatever our key field is in Excel okay. to actually uh, validate against the data of the database and determine if this record already exists. Then great, we have a matching record. So that's over here. And if it doesn't exist, then we have a non-matching record. Okay, so you have uh, basically 2008 has two green arrows coming out of it. Correct. We can also do a conditional split, perhaps, but uh, if you ignore the failures, is the approach. But right. it's all doing the same thing, basically. Okay. So if uh, it's not matching, this one's pretty simple. We just need to insert. So we can just use, uh, in this case, an old ADV destination. Okay. And then just insert the data directly into the table. Uh, no particular issues with that. Um, if it's a match, what we want to do is direct the rows to an OADB command, not a destination. And the command lets us basically run a single SQL statement for each row that passes through it. Okay, so this, this is going to be insert in. Yes. And this is my update send. Exactly. My bad handwriting here. So I should have been a teacher, I guess. Huh? <laughs> so the OADB command is going to do a row by row kind of insert, or update, excuse me, and that's where the squirreliness kind of becomes. Yes, this, this works fine as long as you have a pretty limited number of rows and you don't have a lot of database activity. Okay, and the compromise you said to me was basically because it's an Excel spreadsheet, we probably have a limited amount of rows, so this pattern probably works okay. So let's talk about an alternative pattern. So let's say this Excel spreadsheet becomes a DB2 database, perhaps, with, with a couple hundred million records maybe at this point. So I'm passing, rather than an Excel source, let's make it a DB2 source. Yeah. And this whole pattern of lookups still probably works. Yes. Yeah. So we have, we have 100,000 customers right now. Let's cache those customers a lookup. Everything here still works, except for the OADB command. What we can likely do is make that a destination also. And this destination now, this is, for, again, this is a little harder to configure. So it's going to take a little more time to configure in this case. But if we, this is a little more elegant, but it also takes more, but elegancy takes more time, right? Yes. So the only destination, we're going to insert our updates. So what, what, what does that mean to people kind of watching this? So basically what we're going to do is put the rows to be updated into a staging table in our database. Okay. Uh, so uh, this could be, uh, probably don't want to use a temp table, as SSIS doesn't really like temp tables all that much, but uh, you can use a working table that you created specifically for this purpose. Gotcha. So after we insert all those updates, we need some kind of secondary process to do the updates themselves, right? right. So if this is our data flow, so I'll draw a 
control flow over here. Or, there you go. Then immediately following our control, control flow. So we've got our data flow task right here. And he said immediately following is what? We're going to have an execute SQL task. Okay. And this does the actual update here. So it's a set based update versus a row by row update, exactly. making it much more efficient. Yes. So this is either two patterns here, and this is the, the step, step course we have to create a staging table maybe above that if it's not already created, but this is a lot more elegant, but it also takes probably three times longer to design this probably because it's... It's, 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 it's uh, definitely more complex to, to implement right. because there's more moving parts involved. So what kind of savings would you think the old pattern, pattern one that you showed us to this pattern, as far as not design time savings, but of course would be negative design time savings, but what kind of... What kind of um, end result do you think would we expect? If it's five minutes before, what do you think that LED fan is costing us? Um, it's probably the bulk of that five minutes. So you could see things reduced down to 30 seconds to a minute. Uh, wow. So, the, the and, I, and, I, update. and I've also seen, seen sometimes where we would see a, uh, I have a seven minute execution go down to about three or four seconds in some cases. Right. It all depends on how many rows and all that. Exactly. But uh, yeah, the bulk of that is going to be the LED command transform. Now, one way you can tune the LED command transform as well, because one of the things that's a little known about it is it does open and close a connection for every row going through it also. I'm not sure what they're thinking there, but uh, you can also go to the connection manager, and, and there's a property there called retain same connection, which can be set to false by default. Retain same connection. And this is a connection manager property. So you're not going to see this in the UI. You have to select the connection manager and then and then look at the properties page of that. So there's another. There's one more third approach. Let's get that eraser here. Let me slide over here again. Uh, now this third approach is the task factory approach, mm -hmm. which is the product that uh, you you manage. And this approach, all this stuff goes away. These are just th two of the really five or six approaches that we have. Uh, right. In this case, what happens then? So um, in this case, we can use an upsert destination. So this effectively replaces the need to do lookups, uh, as well as have separate staging tables or anything like that. Um, basically, the upsert destination manages the process of creating the staging table for you as a real temporary table. So unlike with SSIS, the upsert works fine with the with the true temporary table, um, and it basically uh, bulk inserts the data into the database. Uh, using what you've configured on it as keys to determine should this particular record be inserted or should it be updated. Awesome. So the nice thing about this is there's a buffer by, a buffer by a time. So if you have your buffer set to 10,000 rows at a time, you're seeing 10,000 updates at a time versus a row by row insert and update. Correct. So it scales very, very well. Um, it, it's and it does it takes the complexity out. So it's kind of that middle ground, having your cake and eating it too. Mm -hmm. you know, frankly, we we've done both patterns quite a bit. We get tired of doing the same code over and over again. So that's why we built this upsert destination. And it's also a lot cleaner to look at this and see exactly what you're planning on doing because it says you know it's an upsert versus if you have the separate paths, you have to do a little bit more puzzling out if people didn't name things appropriately to figure out right. what exactly is going on in this package. And uh, so this this is a really cool pattern. This is part of Task Factory. You can see it on our website at pragmaticworks.com. Uh, the trial you can download right from there. Uh, but uh, thanks, John. I think this has uh, been pretty helpful today. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email us. Um, but uh, And we'll see you later. Okay. Thanks.